AQA paper one question for, I'm gonna drive you to get higher grades. Stay tuned and watch Schofield on Shakespeare. So 20 marks for this question, 25% of the paper as a whole. Those achieving 20 marks will show perceptive and detailed evaluation. And what exactly do we mean by evaluation? Well, for me, it relates to weighing up, considering both sides to a statement, sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing, sometimes quibbling slightly. At the top end, your evaluation needs to be critical and detailed. Meanwhile, you need to show a perceptive understanding of how the writer has created effects. Whilst using plenty of wisely chosen short embedded quotations. You also need to have focused explicitly on the statement provided within the question and probed it, explored it in a convincing and detailed way. So here's the question that we're going to focus on within this video. A student said, in this section of the story, after Pip has pointed in the direction of his village, the atmosphere becomes much less tense. The convict seems more ridiculous than frightening. To what extent do you agree? Time for the text. In this extract from Great Expectations, Pip comes across an escaped convict whilst visiting his parents' graves. Hold your noise! cried a terrible voice as a man started up from among the graves at the side of the church porch. Keep still, you little devil, and I'll cut your throat! A fearful man, all in coarse grey, with a great iron on his leg, a man with no hats and with broken shoes, and with an old rag tied round his head, a man who had been soaked in water and smothered in mud and lamed by stones and cut by flints and stung by nettles and torn by briars, who limped and shivered and glared and growled and whose teeth chattered in his head as he seized me by the chin. Oh, don't cut my throat, sir, I pleaded in terror. Pray don't do it, sir. Tell us your name, said the man. Quick! Pip, sir. Once more, said the man, staring at me. Give it mouth. Pip! Pip, sir. Show us where you live, said the man. Pint out the place. I pointed to where our village lay on the flat inshore among the older trees and pollards, or a mi mile or more from the church. The man, after looking at me for a moment, turned me upside down and emptied my pockets. There was nothing in them but a piece of bread. When the church came to itself, for he was so sudden and strong that he made it go head over heels before me, and I saw the steeple under my feet, when the church came to itself, I say, I was seated on a high tombstone, trembling while he ate the bread ravenously. You young dog, said the man licking his lips, what fat cheeks you've got. I believe they were fat, though I was at that time undersized for my years and not strong. Darn me if I couldn't eat them, said the man with a threatening shake of his head, and if I hadn't half a mind to it. I earnestly expressed my hope that he wouldn't and held tighter to the tombstone on which he had put me, partly to keep myself upon it, partly to keep myself from crying. Now look here, said the man. Where's your mother? There, sir, said I. He started, made a short run and stopped and looked over his shoulder. There, sir, I timidly explained. Also Georgiana, that's my mother. Oh, said he, coming back. And is that your father along and your mother? Yes, sir, said I. Him too, later this parish. So how far do you agree with the idea that the atmosphere becomes much less tense after Pip has pointed in the direction of the village and that the convict seems more ridiculous than frightening? Two choices for you. Either launch immediately into briefly annotating your extract and producing your response, remembering that you're looking to produce around 600 words, or scrutinise the hints that are about to appear on screen, which may help you produce some even more nuanced, intelligent evaluation. Look away from the screen now and wait for my voice if you don't want to see these hints.
Time to get started. The text will reappear at five second intervals. Off you go. Good luck. Time now to compare your response to my model answer. Following the dramatic, violent exchanges of the first part of the text, there is no doubt that the atmosphere becomes less tense when the writer describes Pip being mugged. The convict turned him upside down and emptied his pockets. We might expect such an event to be recounted in a way which emphasises violence and violation, but instead were given a quasi-comic description of Pip's perspective after being picked up. The church came to itself. He made it go head over heels before me. This is a fun, hyperbolic description of Pip's feelings of disorientation, which results in a less tense and frightening atmosphere. Particularly as it is being narrated by Pip as an adult, we can safely presume that no long-lasting harm came to him as a result of this encounter. The personification of the church going head over heels conjures up amusing images of the church somehow toppling over and reduces the tension that has previously built up. However, the idea of the convict seeming ridiculous seems a little harsh and inaccurate, although his threats do seem rather over the top and cartoonish to the older modern reader. He refers to Pip as a young dog and declares, What fat cheeks you have got! He subsequently snarls, darn me if I couldn't eat him. For a non-infant reader, the idea of a strange man eating a child is ridiculous and something more akin to a nursery tale than a genuinely frightening encounter. That said, it is important to point out that the young Pip is clearly frightened by this exchange and is earnest as he begs the convict to save his life whilst being on the verge of tears to keep myself from crying. However, the decree of ironic detachment in the narrative distances the reader from the dangers felt by the young boy and helps us view the convict as not necessarily ridiculous, but someone all too human. In his need for warmth, shelter and food, he ate the bread ravenously. The adverb ravenously highlights the fact that the convict is starving and is desperate to assuage his hunger as quickly as possible even if the convict does appear to the reader to be a parody of a villain at times, we cannot but help pity someone in such dire straits. The lack of genuine threat from the convict is emphasised towards the end of the text when he nearly runs away. Following Pip's revelation that his mother is there, sir, he started, made a short run and stopped and looked over his shoulder. The fact that the convict instinctively starts to run away after hearing that another adult may be present highlights the extent to which he is on edge and nervous as opposed to ridiculous. One would presume that an adult female would pose no serious threat to a genuine fearless villain. And so this reaction highlights the fact that this convict is definitely not a potential cannibal but someone desperate to avoid any form of adult human society. In addition, Pip's overly literal response to the convict's question is comic for the reader. Yes, his mother is buried there, but it would be more use usual to make reference to her lifeless status as well as location. Overall, it would be more apt to say that the light-hearted, ironic tone means that the atmosphere is not particularly tense, in spite of the fact the extract focuses on a scary-looking and sounding convict menacing a young child. The convict may speak and act in a melodramatic way, but he comes across to readers as pitiable rather than either frightening or ridiculous. Let's pick apart this response. Why does it get the full 20? Well, it focuses on an aspect of the question immediately. This question has two parts in which you have to argue, one, whether the atmosphere becomes less tense, and two, whether the convict seems more ridiculous than frightening. Although these are related, it's easier to attack each part separately. 
In this opening sentence, I focus on the first part and agree that the atmosphere has become much less tense before explaining why. You need to select a range of judicious textual detail. Or, put otherwise, you need to choose your quotations wisely. Note that I have trimmed and edited this quotation down so that it is not unnecessarily long. I tend to think quotations should be a maximum of eight words. Carefully scrutinise the way this sentence begins. We might expect, but instead we are given. This is an example of perceptive and detailed evaluation. Your conventional mugging would surely emphasise violence and make us feel a great deal of sympathy for the victim. However, the author's use of personification makes the whole event seem more light-hearted, something less tense, something less to be worried about. In this paragraph, note how I tackle head-on the second part of the question, the extent to which the convict seems ridiculous. I aim to be nuanced in my evaluation and do accept that his threats, rather than necessarily he himself, do seem rather over-the-top and cartoonish to the reader. The mark scheme requires you to show a perceptive understanding of the writer's methods. I do this here by referencing the ironic detachment in the narrative and exploring the effects of the adverb ravenously. This has been a Schofield on Shakespeare production helping you with question for AQA GCSE English Language Paper 1. Danke schön for watching.